my service lights on telling me I need to change my brake fluid. Let's see if we can get that done. For this job, you'll need about two hours, give or take, uh, based on your familiarity with working on your vehicle. Now, let's go over the tools we'll need today. First, an impact gun makes taking the tires on and off a little easier, but optional. A vacuum tool uh, used in conjunction with an air compressor, it enables you to do this as a one-person job instead of a two-person job, which we'll get into later. An 11 millimeter wrench for the front bleed screws, nine millimeter wrench for the back bleed screws, uh, a ratchet and extension. You can use this instead of your impact gun. Um, you'll need the extension regardless because you will need that to go on the um, torque wrench. Seven millimeter socket for the wheel lugs. A syringe and some hose. I'm using a syringe from a farm store and some uh, fuel line hose. Uh, this helps sucking out the brake um, reservoir as well as um, you need the hose for bleeding. Some gloves because brake fluid's nasty stuff. Make sure you have those gloves. A torque wrench for putting your tires back on. A breaker bar for getting those uh, lug nuts off your wheels. Uh, brake fluid, of course. We're using DOT4. It's a DOT4 in the system already. Um, and we're using genuine BMW fluid because that's what I had. You'll actually need two of these bottles to do a full flush. And then just some sort of plastic tub or container uh, to bleed your fluid into. Uh, and store it until you can dispose of it safely, um, usually at your recycle center or anywhere else they'll take uh, hazardous waste. And with that, let's get back to the car. So on the driver's side, we're going to remove this cover. It's held on by a rubber tab here, another rubber tab here, and then we have two plastic clips, one under there and one over here. So we'll pop the first tab, Pop the second tab, and then the two plastic tabs, and off that comes. And here's our brake fluid reservoir. Brake fluid is pretty nasty stuff, so we're going to be wearing gloves the whole time. Uh, and then if we spill any, we want to wipe it up right away so it doesn't eat some plastic or wreck some paint. Uh, we're going to start off with first opening up the reservoir and sucking out as much of the fluid as we can so that uh, it's less to bleed through the system. To suck it out, we just use a syringe. Uh, you can pick up at a uh, farm store or on Amazon and um, just some hose. There's a strainer here that doesn't appear to come out readily, um, so we can't suck out the, the bottom little bit, but that's okay. Uh, we'll leave it as is and we'll start filling. This car does take DOT4 fluid, which is a little less common than DOT3, so make sure you're buying the correct stuff. You cannot mix DOT3 and DOT4. So here we have our DOT3 bottles. We have three of them. Two should be enough, but I have a third just in case. Before you use them, make sure the seal is perfect. Brake fluid is hydroscopic, meaning it absorbs water. And if these seals are broken, the fluid is no good. Um, it will have absorbed some water, which alters the boiling point and ultimately your braking performance. So always double check these seals before you um, start filling. We'll break our seal, and then as we're filling, we'll just be very careful uh, to not get any dirt in there. We don't want any dirt in the braking system. Um, some of the holes in there are pretty small, and we don't want them getting plugged up and resulting in a, a, a larger repair bill. So we'll fill up everything we sucked out. You'll notice the new brake fluid's a little lighter color than the fluid we took out. 
Um, that's what we'll be looking for when we bleed the brakes at each wheel, is that change in color. We'll fill this right up. You don't want this um, running dry while you're bleeding, so we'll have to come back and keep topping this up. Uh, any air getting sucked into the system means a, a much bigger bleeding process uh, to get that air back out. So it's very important we never suck any air into the brake lines. There we go, we're ready to move on to our first wheel. Uh, we'll start at the wheel furthest from our brake booster, uh, which will be our rear right tire. You always start with the furthest tire and then work closer. So we'll do the right rear, right left, then we'll do the front right, and then uh, lastly, front left. These can be a, a little hard to get off sometimes as the rims will bond to the steel rotor behind it. Um, so we'll just give them a bit of a love tap with the summers to bounce them off. When putting back on, we'll put a uh, touch of anti-seize on there. Um, that makes this process of pulling them off a little bit easier than if uh, it wasn't there at all. So we have our same hose from when we sucked out the reservoir attached to our bleed nipple going into a bucket uh, and a 9 millimeter wrench on the uh, bleed screw. So what we'll do is we will open it, push the brake pedal, drain out what we can, close it, then release the brake pedal to suck more fluid in from the reservoir. That way we don't suck in any air um, from this end. If you release the brake pedal uh, before you close it, you can get air back into the system. And again, that's something we would have to bleed out. Now let's give it a try. So open, push, close, release. Ready? Open, push, close, release. We don't always have helpers available, so we're going to give this a try with a vacuum pump. We'll take our bleed line, put it on our vacuum, which is hooked up to our air compressor, and now we'll run it. Push, release, push, release. So the brake fluid is looking a little lighter in color, which means our fresh fluid has come through. Um, we're done this wheel, so we will uh, put some anti-seize on here and put our summer tire on and then move to the rear left tire, which is the next furthest from the booster. We're back at the reservoir and we're down about a third on fluid from bleeding that one line. Uh, so now we'll just top it up and get it nice and full again. One bottle down, we should use two. All right, onto the second wheel. we 
we have both rears done, so we will top up the reservoir again. And then we will move on to the front right brake. So on this bleed screw, the uh, dust cover had come off and it seems to be plugged so our vacuum won't work. So we're going to have to resort back to uh, pumping the brakes manually to push whatever blockage is out there so we can flush the fluid. Push! It's coming, slowly but surely. Release! Oh, it's kind of hard now. Push! So we'll do a final snug up, nice and tight. We did go back and check the reservoir to make sure we got enough through this so it's fully flushed. Um, and there we go. This bleed valve is um, still very restrictive. Um, we had to push pretty hard on the pedal and the vacuum wouldn't work at all um, to get it to bleed. So next time we're doing the uh, brake bleeding, we'll have to replace that one. But it worked well enough to bleed it out today. With that, we'll fill up the reservoir um, again and then move to the front left tire. We've done bleeding all the lines and we'll give it a final top up now. Looking at the levels, we're right at the max line. So that was where we started and where we ended. So that was perfect on the, on the flushing. So let's close this all back up now. So it's all closed up now. We'll give the wheels a torque. Uh, we will check the air pressures in the tires and then we will reset the service interval for brake fluid uh, on the car's computer. Brake fluid's good to go for another two years. So here's my bleed tool. This was my first time using it. It was just a cheapo unit off of Amazon that seemed to have some decent reviews uh, and it worked not bad. You'll notice that after each caliper, uh, except for the one where I had a plugged bleed valve, uh, I did a manual pump just to make sure it was still coming out right. There was no air in the system, no bubbles, uh, and it worked out pretty good. Um, I'd rather probably pump the brakes, to be honest, just to be on the safe side. But if I didn't have a helper, um, I, yeah, I'd use it again. So, um, not a bad tool for the toolbox. Another job well done. Give me a thumbs up if you like that, and hit subscribe if you'd like to see more.